Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm Jim Goddard. John, welcome back to the show. Jim, it's a pleasure to be back. John Barrick announced a new discovery in Nevada last week that is not part of the joint venture formed with Newmont earlier this year. Should we be paying attention to this? Jim, Barrick is a $40 billion company, which does about 8 to $10 billion worth of uh, revenues per year, primarily from gold production. And uh, uh, you, you have to ask yourself, well, why are we talking about um, a new discovery inside a company that large? Uh, it's it's uh, arguably uh, the biggest uh, gold producer in the world. Well, um, earlier this year, uh, Barrick and Newmont finally decided to pool uh, most of their Nevada assets, uh, uh, the Carlin Trend assets, uh, the Getchell Trend assets, and the Cortez Battle Mountain Trend assets to produce, to create a company, 61.5% Barrick and 38.5% Newmont, uh, Newmont, what they call the uh, Nevada Gold Mines Joint Venture. And this will be producing about uh, three and a half, uh uh, million ounces or so a year from their existing operations. But what's really interesting is that the new CEO, Mark Bristow, who came through the earlier merger of Rangold with Barrick, he has injected a whole new life into the company. He has recognized that Nevada is an underrated gold region in the world. It is an extraordinary gold producing region. And in the last decade, uh, Barrick has had its, uh, you know, uh, hesitations in terms of funding expiration. They used to have a hundred and fifty million dollar a year budget, uh, but in two thousand and nine, they they made that uh, error of acquiring uh, Equinox, the, the Zambian copper operation, for uh, for a billion dollars. Uh, the bean counters ended up getting in control of the company, and so there's been sort of a hesitation in terms of aggressive expiration. But all of that is changing under the leadership of uh, Mark Bristow. Now, the four-mile uh, discovery, this was not included in the pooling of the assets. Uh, Newmont also kept some assets, but the four-mile is really interesting because it is just north of the Gold Rush deposit, which is part of that Cortez trend. And Gold Rush has 15 million ounces uh, Outlined and it, it's heading uh, into production uh, as, as, an, as an underground mine with refractory ore. But in 2015, um, a group of geologists within Barrick uh, uh, came up with this idea that if you push farther north, and they, they literally step about at least a kilometer, kilometer and a half beyond uh, the limits of the gold rush deposit. And this was controversial inside the company at the at the time uh one 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 group wanted to just continue to inch northwards and follow wherever the deposit's going but this group had this idea uh we are going to uh, uh step and farther north and drill and and the, the rock on top is horrible upper plate rocks uh, you know the, the kind that doesn't really host anything the target is the wen band five uh carbonate limestone uh, horizon. There's uh, eight Wenban units, but the Wenban 5 is the one that turns out to be the juiciest in terms of soaking up the gold. And they had a, an 11-hole program, and uh, they managed to come up with snake eyes in the first 10 holes. And these were 1,000 meter or so deep holes. This was like really drilling blind based on some hypothesis on I'm, I'm eager to find out what it was that made them pick that particular area to to to, to drill, uh, you know, 11 holes. But the 11th hole turned into a discovery, and it's it's very high grade gold mineralization. It's more like what you find in the Gold Strike area of the, of the of the North Carlin area than than what you have in Gold Russia, which itself is this four kilometer long cigar shaped body. It's it's a breccia type body. Whereas what we have here, it's uh, it's, it's deeper. Uh, the the forma structure uh, there, there's a there's a complex fold where the wind band horizon has folded in upon itself, and uh, and there's these low angle faults that come through, and it's really soaked up everything. But what blew everybody away last week on 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 September 19th uh, Thursday was an announcement uh, that they had done a step out another. Uh, 
uh, a kilometer to the north of the limits of Four Mile and, and two kilometers from the best hole uh, in the Four Mile deposit, which was uh, you know 25.6 meters of 81 grams per goal. That's more than two two ounces, almost three ounces uh, per ton. And and this intersection between 1,200 and 1,300 meters had five or seven had seven intervals of um, of high grade gold, of which three of them which were of decent width, and they ran from 21 to 49 grams per ton. And this is far enough away from the main four mile zone that they are calling it a new ore body. So. This four-mile area was excluded because they knew they had high-grade gold. They still have a lot of work to do to delineate uh, how big it is. This could be very, very big, and that's why they kept it outside of the uh, the joint venture. Uh, there's some formula by which uh, if they um, uh, um, produce a feasibility study, it will be contributed uh, to the joint venture on some sort of a fair fair value basis. But for now, it's a 100% owned barrack asset, that, and they're now drilling this. And it's part of a broader campaign by the Nevada Gold JV to look at their projects. And, and now that we have the checkerboard and all that consolidated, so it isn't the case that, uh, you know, Barrick owns the, the BLM lands and, and Newmont owns the original Santa Fe lands. Now it's all one. Now they can look at these things as as a unit and say, what is it that we need to do? And with uh, Bristow's mandate, that expiration is what's going to make this thing huge. This is a big uh, a green light for Nevada in general. And they've got a very large area of interest where if they attempt to do anything else, uh, it has to be part of the uh, joint venture. But the four-mile discovery, we have to watch it. We have to see what it's doing. It's, it is it is having an impact, I believe, on, on Barrick's stock price. It's not going to be something that makes a stock go up uh, you know, 100 times in price. But it is a symbol that under cover in Nevada, you can still find enormous uh, rich or very rich gold gold deposits and you have to drill through cover that has absolutely nothing on surface that would lead you to think that there's something underneath. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. Grand Portage Resources' Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources' trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications. Patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the U.S., AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, a few months ago, a Discovery Watch Jr. called New Legacy suspended work on its Red Hill project in Nevada, but last week announced a seven and a half million dollar financing so it can drill what it calls the four mile lookalike target. What's driving the renewed interest? Well, we've talked about uh, um, Red Hill, New, New Legacy's Red Hill, uh, a, a number of times uh, on, on Discovery Watch since we started the. This is the the most important junior control land position in what you might call the Cortez trend. Uh, it's uh, it's about uh, 12 kilometers southeast of the um, the gold rush, the 15 million ounce uh, gold rush deposit of of Barrick, uh, uh, and uh, they auctioned it from Barrick in. 2010, late 2010, on a $5 million earn-in. Albert Matter and, and Roger Steininger at the time were the key people driving this. Uh, uh, Barrick at the time was um, you know, getting rid of assets. Uh, some of the people inside of Barrick were not keen about getting rid of it. And interestingly, in 2017, Ed Cope, who uh, was since 2003, has run all of the North American exploration programs for Barrick, uh, he, he had a 
a planned retirement underway, and he left. And Charles Weekly, who, who had worked with uh, uh, Ed Cope right from the beginning, he also left in, in, in early 2017. He'd worked on the gold rush, and uh, and they joined. They they, they joined uh, um, uh, uh, New Legacy in 2017. Now, in that period, 2010 to 2017, the company raised a lot of money. Uh, 20 million, over 20 million dollars has been spent on this project. Uh, Barrick at the time, uh, um, you know, said, "Okay, what we have here is this iceberg zone, oxidized mineralization, not very interesting. Uh, it's too far away from our gold rush area and our Cortez area. We'll give it to these guys, but we'll have a 70 percent." Back in and Ed Cope and Salfa was responsible for insisting on this back in. Now, when New Legacy vested in 2015, they really didn't. They hadn't yet produced a resource estimate. They'd been chasing after this uh, avocado target uh, 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 farther to the north in the under the gravel covered area where a CSAMT uh, uh, survey had suggested uh, some, some sort of sulfide body at depth. They had drilled a property option from Miranda, which these days calls itself outcrop gold because it cannot imagine itself finding anything that isn't sticking out of out of the ground. Uh, they had had a big hit back in the mid 2000s, but that hole could never really be duplicated, uh, and and that property has now reverted back to the original owner. It's an inlier within the overall property. But when they'd spent their five million bucks, uh, Barrick had a choice of. Uh, you know, backing in for 70% by spending $15 million. But since uh, 2015 wasn't a great time for the gold producers, uh, it decided, no, it'll stick with 30%. And then they eventually decided, well, rather than pay 30% of whatever budget uh, Albert comes up with, uh, uh, let's uh, let's convert this to equity. So they sold their 30% for 32 million shares. And 2016 was sort of the last hurrah for, for, for New Legacy. Oceana Gold came and put a whole bunch of money into the company. It was pretty much interested in seeing some sort of low-grade oxide heat leachable deposit emerge at Iceberg. But it's it's like going to be half a gram per ton or so, maybe half million ounces. Uh, and, uh, and the stock hit 50 cents that year, but then it sort of has fizzled away in the last couple years. And when 2017... Uh, when when the the new Barrick guys came in and Alex Davidson, who'd also retired, also joined the company, uh, um, they started to do a complete rethink of the project. There'd been some excitement about the Serena intersection. They'd got some high grade uh, intervals. Um, the iceberg would get um, you know occasionally get a higher grade interval, but nothing was really hanging together. And so the experience that Charles Weekly, uh, Ed Cope, and and a number of other people who left the uh, had retired from Barrick came over was they did a very detailed relogging of all the data that had been accumulated by this twenty twenty four million dollars worth of uh, expenditures and they came up with a completely different model that uh, had started to emerge from work being done on the um, on, on the on, on 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 the you know Barrick's uh, uh, Cortez and 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 Carlin deposits and that is that this idea that it is these low angle faults which uh, were created a long time ago by the uh, the, the thrusting of the uh, uh, lower plate or over uh, upper plate over the uh, lower plate and then of course uh, everything within that gets thrusted so there are multiple stacked thrust faults apparently it is these thrust faults which are the primary conduit for the Carlin type fluids that between 42 million and 25 million years ago as part of this great Farallon subduction slab rollback created a magmatic sweep that uh, exposed uh, northern Nevada to a lot of these brinded uh, uh, or ponded brines loaded with gold, arsenic, uh, mercury, uh, antimony, uh, all the so-called Carlin pathfinders, and wherever it is that they found crustal scale faults, they made it to the surface, and it's when they found these these uh, low-angle faults that they traveled along them, and that's where they had to find the traps. And in the Gold Rush uh, area, it is the Wen Band 5. And, and what Ed and Charles uh, realized was uh, the high-grade intersections that were randomly showing up in the Iceberg and Serena area were really uh, 
uh, uh, caused by uh, the intersections of these low angle faults uh, that uh, were intersecting with high angled faults and therefore creating a you know a, a, a localized place where where gold could spike. But there wasn't really any big sponge within this, and there were, it was also uh, the stratigraphy had been uh, only crudely. Uh, logged and these guys went in there and did all their fossil studies and broke it down and uh, and said well you know you used to talk about this being the tip of an iceberg that what we saw at surface you go deeper um and, and then you'll find it but you've done that you you were unsuccessful at that what you really have is a plume of exhaust coming from the west and here are these low angle faults that are that have delivered this exhaust, and we have to march west. Now, marching west is like, oh my gosh, to the west, there are, it's not just upper plate sitting on top of the uh, uh, hopefully lower plate rocks, but there's also much younger volcanic rocks related to the North Nevada Rift, which happens to cross right through that general area of the, uh, of the iceberg uh, iceberg deposit or, or, or system, whatever you want to want to call it. So on the surface, it's younger rock. It's completely blind. But what they did is they, they did this uh, these CSAMT surveys over this whole area, all the way over to the VO, VIO target, which is more an epithermal uh, target related to the younger N- northern Nevada rifting event. And and they were able to, and to with this sort of uh, ground geophysical survey, which they'd also done over the area where they had lots of drill data, they were able to do detailed 3D mapping of the stratigraphy. And what they have put together, even though there are no drill holes uh, in, in the western part of this property, they've put together a three-dimensional model of where these different horizons are. And uh, they proposed a three and a half million U.S. budget to, to Albert uh, earlier this year. And uh, you know, Albert looked at this, and he looked at the million and a half bucks Canadian left in his treasury, and he looked at, you know, gold was still languishing earlier this year, and he uh, he said, you know what, I can't raise any money. This this we're in the eighth year of a bear market. Gold's going nowhere. So he in in early June he suspended the field work. You know, everybody was put on furlough. And of course, the stock, which had been sort of nine, ten cents, immediately tanked to three cents, and that was sort of the the depressing event earlier this year. And it was almost like uh, Albert needed to do this to make gold start going up, because since then gold has risen. And and a couple of weeks ago, he finally decided it's time to get back to work. Um, they announced, uh, in fact, the same day they managed. I don't know how they managed to time this, but they announced a. 100 million unit financing at seven and a half cents with a half worn. And, uh, and that will bring their fully diluted up to 500 million, million shares. And everybody's saying, oh my gosh, you're taking the dilutionary hit. But even at 500 million times seven cents, that's a 35, 40 million dollar valuation. And yet they're on the trend that has the Cortez and the Gold Rush and all these other other things, uh, they're the only junior with a meaningful land position. And with the work Ed and Charles have done to create a story as to why we have multiple targets of which the ones they're going to tackle first as soon as they have the money in the bank, the first is going to be what they call the four-mile look-alike target, and the second will be the Serena offset where they've realized that uh, what they were chasing there, there's a uh, high angle fault which appears to have slid the system off to the southwest. There is what they call the um, the, 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 the anticline rift target, but that's in an area where they have to go for a larger permit, so that probably won't be available or permitted for drilling un- until next summer. But as soon as they've got money in, they're going to tackle this four-mile look-alike target. And the reason they call it four-mile look-alike is that based on the stratigraphic modeling that the CSAMT has allowed them to do, they see the same sort of uh, folding of the uh, uh, what they believe to be the Wenban 5 formation, uh, as as is the case in uh, in, in, in the four mile itself. Now, there is no geochemical evidence at surface that anything is going on on that depth. So it is basically a, uh, a geologically, a structural geology driven uh, model in 
the, a place which is very close to existing uh, uh, gold deposits, and so it's a high-stakes, high-risk uh, play. But if they are correct that these low-angle faults that are, are in this area, the, the source of all the gold has come up somewhere from the west, and if it hit these uh, this four-mile type target, uh, uh, there should be something there. And then they'll step to the Serena offset and go after that. And so, in a sense, they're they're almost back to square one. And the twenty million dollars plus that they spent failed to deliver anything uh, anything meaningful in terms of a deposit. But it furnished a whole bunch of information. And this is what good geology is: is you use the uh, disappointment of past expiration to reconstruct what's going on, come up with a different perspective, bring knowledge gained elsewhere to play that wasn't available to the group that was initially looking at it, and you take it, you, you do a fresh shot at it, and uh, I, I'm hopeful that they will get this financing done soon, and uh, if they do, uh, you know, $35 million to, uh, let's say, 350 or a billion dollars, which is what if they find a four-mile lookalike is going to end up being being worth uh, that's a uh, that's that's a uh, uh, you know thirty times so you know seven and a half cent stock goes at two three dollars it's not as impressive as say something going to ten twenty dollars but in terms of the amount of wealth that it's created from people willing to take a shot on a high high risk high reward uh, target uh, that would be a huge windfall and it would certainly uh, help uh, with the whole image of Nevada as not just a place where the the Newmont uh, Barrick uh, JV control everything that's going to be good, but there's also stuff that's good left to be found by the juniors. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome back. John, Nevada Exploration recently reported that the 11th hole at Southgrass Valley came up snake eyes, just like the earlier ones, but they've expanded the property with additional staking. Shouldn't they just be giving up? Yeah, well, when you see that, uh, you know, Barrick went and drilled 10 snake eyes and then came up with a discovery hole with the 11th, uh, you say, well, if you can't do it in the in, in, in those uh, first 11 holes, maybe you should give up. However, Barrick was doing this uh, a, 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 a thousand meters or so from a world-class uh, 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 15 million ounce gold deposit in a district where there was already the pipeline deposit across the valley to the west and the uh, Cortez uh, 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 mine to, to the southwest, all Carlin type systems you know, totaling uh, you know, 30, 30 million plus, uh, plus ounces. So, so um, you know, Coming up with uh, the winning hole in 11 at that place, well, you know, that must have been a bit scary for the Barrick guys when the first 10 came up snake eyes. But consider where South Grass Valley is of Nevada Exploration, Inc. Uh, it's actually outside the area of interest box that Newmont and Barrick have drawn around their holdings to show where, you know, neither company can do anything within this box uh, uh uh, without it being part of the joint venture. So that's kind of a statement saying this is where there's likely to be something good. And guess what? South Grass Valley is outside it. It is, in fact, in an area where there's nothing in the vicinity to be optimistic that there's going to be a gold deposit. There was also nothing to be optimistic that there's even going to be, you know, hydrothermally altered uh, lower plate rocks. Uh, but that is why where the company was last year 
in October when it started this drill program, they had generated this target with their hydrogeochemistry method, uh, which was, you know, instead of sort of staying within the known trends, they would go into all these other basins and they were building on John Montine's theory about the Farallon subduction slab rollback and that these Carlin type fluids could have come up anywhere where there was a pathway to the surface and uh, and they were looking for areas um, where you know wasn't already owned because there was something sticking out of the ground that uh, led uh, the big guys to to a big discovery and south grass valley emerged as uh as that type of place and it had seen work because there is outcropping lower plate it's not altered kennecott did some work uh before it gave up on, on, on Nevada, but it, it even drilled a bit into the gravels, uh, but didn't find anything interesting. So when these guys started out in October, they wanted to do a, a 10 hole drill program on a one kilometer by three kilometer grid parked on top of this gravel wasteland where you really could see nothing. And even in the distance, the far northwest corner, there was something sticking out of the ground called Goodwin Butte. Yes, it was lower plate, but it was completely unaltered. If it's not altered, it means no fluids ever flowed through it, and therefore there's no chance of it having having any gold. So literally, you had to be insane to consider that there was anything interesting. And the first thing they did, the first hole drilled at the at the southwestern corner went smack into a granite intrusion. And that's not going to be a host for a Carlin-type uh, gold deposit. This thing was Jurassic age. It was 150 million years years old. Uh, and they panicked and moved the drill all the way to the northern end of the grid and drilled a 600-plus meter hole and came up with a altered lower plate uh, rocks, confirming that lower plate is present under the gravels, that it has been pumped and it has a you know, very, very low, below 50 ppb gold, so obviously no gold or grade interval, but it had the elevated arsenic and uh, antimony, all the Carlin Pathfinder elements, and they um, they, they spent uh, the rest of that season uh, drilling various holes on the grid and coming up with similar intervals. And the idea was if we drill these widely spaced holes, we should get be able to vector in. Some should have lower pathfinders. Others should have more pathfinders. And that'll give us a sense of getting closer to where the ore body actually ended up. And, and so after they'd done all this, uh, it all looked pretty much the same. And when they started the new year, they started focusing at the northern end because that's where last and in the prior year they had done experimental um, soil sampling for mercury and they developed a booming mercury in soil anomaly. And, and the idea with the groundwater is the, the groundwater flows laterally, uh, dissolves any, any exposed mineralization in bedrock and it flows for a while. And, and then it eventually loses the gold, and the direction of the flow would have been to the north, and the, the bedrock gets deeper, the gravel's thicker, uh, but mercury, it's a gas, it goes straight up through whatever fabric there is in the rock and the gravels, so where you see a mercury anomaly, it'll be generally pretty close to the bedrock source, and the uh, they couldn't really uh, get any values uh, for the ground from groundwater for the other for the pathfinders and gold in that area, but uh, they decide there's got to be something here. So this year they drilled several holes. Pretty much spent the year on this on holes, uh, you know, nine nine to eleven. Uh, Ten was lost. Uh, nine was an experimental hole close to the edge uh, to to try and gain additional information. Uh, it showed up. Yep, it's still here. Hole ten they lost as soon as they hit bedrock, and then eleven, the one everybody would, was waiting for hoping that, okay, this will be just like four mile and it's going to be a winner. Well, they managed to push that to over 800 meters until they got into rocks they realized were not no longer favorable. And it also came up with similar mediocre or almost non-existent gold values. And so 11 holes, 3,500 meters of bedrock in this three kilometer by one kilometer area, and you would think they should pack it in. What they did is they actually expanded the land position as soon as September arrived. It's now um, a 12 kilometer by six kilometer thing. And, and they've realized we need to move back 
to that granite stock, which in the literature it's called the, the Grass Valley stock. And we need to drill close to the flanks of that and even on top of it because that's where all the gold and groundwater is coming from. This is like the gold strike uh, uh, um, little boulder basin uh, situation in the North Carlin district where the uh, conditions were created by when the intrusion came in, the upper plate, lower plate assemblage already existed and it would have bowed it and made it bent and bent it and created a some sort of anticline and uh, and and and, and prep the rocks for you know soaking up the gold. So the plan now is to go back in there and start testing these targets. No longer use or expensive oriented core, which was done to uh, collect a database. And in a sense, they've done on a much smaller budget uh, what the New Legacy has done. Uh, in, in, in the iceberg area, uh, they now have a lot of detailed data about the stratigraphy, where the uh, low angle faults are, where the high angle faults are, where the anticline axis is, uh, uh, where, where the apparent boundaries of the stock are. And so now they'll go in there with RC drilling, which is cheaper. And instead of drilling for geology to set the stage for sniper kill shots, they will now be drilling for gold more on a systematic grid type basis and so they're kind of uh now in a place where say the uh, the four mile geologists were when they did that big step out from gold rush and said let's drill 11 holes here and see if we can get something and in this case because they already have geochemical support in terms of the groundwater geochemistry coming from this area uh the nevada exploration guys know there's something there and so Maybe it won't take uh, uh, 10 snake eye holes to get the gold intersection. Maybe when they get into this focused area, it will come a lot quicker than 10 holes drilled uh, in an area that's merely a geological reconstruction under big, nasty upper plate cover rock that isn't really showing anything about the geochemical potential uh, at depth. So it's, uh, you know, 11 snake eyes in this case, doesn't mean anything because it was all part of a massive data generating uh, exercise that has shown that there's a North Carlin scale lower plate altered window in this part of Nevada that is outside the box that uh, Barrick and Newmont think is prospective for really good world-class uh, Carlin type deposits. John, thanks a lot for the update. You're welcome, Jim. I've been speaking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at howstreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.